Tonight after police shoot a robbery suspect in Northwest Indiana, it all happened at a strip mall. Plus, a new poll shows one of the candidates for Chicago mayor is pulling away from the rest of the field. Chicago Auto Show wrapping up this weekend, but some shoppers finding new cars may be out of their price range. Plus, beauty products from Black-owned companies, the new collective that's a celebration of Black-owned businesses. And our I-Team Insider segment. All week, the I-Team been looking into the background of the Michigan State shooter. Tonight, we dive into whether the shooting could have been prevented. But tonight we begin with breaking news out of Northwest Indiana where police shot a suspect after an altercation. Officer and the suspect were taken to hospital. This is all happened in a shopping center parking lot near the intersection of Indianapolis and Maine in Highland, Indiana. Trey Ward reports. We're learning it was a security guard here at the Kohl's store who apparently saw someone who allegedly has a history of shoplifting from the store. They called police and two officers with the Highland Indiana Police Department arrived on scene and confronted the suspect. A confrontation ensued and one of the officers was hurt. The other one fired shots, striking that suspect in the hand. A police shooting in a strip mall in Highland, Indiana. Police officers arriving to the scene this afternoon as the Lake County Sheriff's Department confirms they are handling the investigation of a shooting involving a Highland police officer. Chopper 7 HD above the scene showing that vehicle wedged between two cars at the Highland Grove Shopping Center. Patrons driving up to a mangled mess of vehicles. All we see is like a bunch of cars and immediately we're like so confused and we're scared. Police focusing their investigation on this silver SUV. An officer on scene tells me that SUV struck multiple cars parked in the parking lot. A closer look shows bullet holes through the front window on the passenger side of that silver SUV. Customers now cautious as police investigate. But just, you know, watch your surroundings, watch around you. Don't be naive to, you know, just anybody walking. Just, you know, keep your eyes open. Keep your, you know, keep yourself safe. We're told the injured officer and the suspect were taken to hospitals for treatment. There's no word on the extent of their injuries as the Lake County Sheriff's Department here in Indiana is handling the investigation. In Highland, Indiana, I'm Trey Ward, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thanks so much for that update tonight, Trey. And tonight, police are looking for the person who shot and killed a man right in front of his pregnant wife and their young children while driving on the Stevenson Expressway. The family was heading home last night on I-55 near Ashland. When the shooting happened, Umberto Marin Garcia's wife describing the moment she heard the gunfire and her husband telling them to duck down. My daughter grabbed her little sister off the car seat and covered her. And I thought we were okay <laughs> until I, <laughs> I noticed that he lost control. Sources telling the ABC 7i team this was unlikely to be a random attack given the aggressive nature of the shooting. A lot of people seeing icy sidewalks today following all that snow yesterday. Another big problem downtown, ice falling off buildings. Look at that. Ah, that's scary. Yeah, it was Willis Tower. It was okay, though. Yeah, wow. Well, the warm up and the freeze also causing some big potholes on the outbound Stevenson. Today, we spotted several cars with flat tires near First Avenue. IDOT says the holes will be patched tomorrow, weather permitting, of course. So let's check in with meteorologist Cheryl Scott, and she has your AccuWeather forecast on this Friday. Happy Friday, yay. We made it yeah, through another we yeah. work week together, Cheryl, yes. and we hear good news is on the horizon. It really is. We have about three more hours of work to go, then it's our weekend. Hopefully you're yeah. enjoying yours <laughs> right now. It is cold out there, 22 degrees, mostly clear skies, but we're going to warm it up into the weekend. Weather permitting, looking good for all your activities. Live Doppler 7 Max right now taking a break after yesterday. Satellite and radar, mostly clear skies, and with that said, temperatures are quite cool. In the mid to upper teens back to the north and west midway right now at 23 degrees. Then we factor in a light breeze 5 to 10 miles per hour really does make a difference. It feels like it's in the single digits to teens across much of the region. Now temperatures tonight won't be dropping too much more. We head into the weekend. We get those temperatures back above average into the 40s. We go for tomorrow. We will have some high cloudiness as we head through the afternoon, but dry conditions for our Saturday. A few sprinkles.
chemicals possible overnight fr Saturday into Sunday. But while we're sleeping, by Sunday we dry back out. We bring out the sunshine, partly cloudy and highs going up to near 50 degrees. Gusty winds, so it'll feel like it's in the 40s throughout the day, but a whole lot better than today in terms of our feel like temperature. And then some active weather next week. We'll talk about our next rain ice snow threat coming up back to you. All right, Cheryl, thank you. Now federal prosecutors have asked a judge to sentence R. Kelly to more than 25 years in prison for his conviction here in Chicago. A jury convicted the singer last year on child pornography and child enticement charges. The 25 years would be in addition to the 30 year sentence he is already serving for a conviction in New York. Federal prosecutors say the only way to ensure Kelly doesn't reoffend is to keep him in prison for the rest of his life. Kelly's lawyer calling the 25 years excessive. The police in Northwest Suburban Hanover Park released the name of the man they believe shot and killed a woman earlier this week. Police say William Taylor shot Clarice Alexander Monday after she dropped her son off at school. Investigators say Taylor and Alexander had a relationship. Her sister told ABC 7 that Alexander told her she's called police multiple times on a man she knew, believing he was stalking her. Police say Taylor is considered armed and dangerous. Five former Memphis police officers charged in the death of Tyree Nichols have pleaded not guilty to second degree murder and other charges. It comes a month since the officers were captured on camera beating Nichols during an arrest. He died days later. After today's hearing, Tyree Nichols mother told reporters that the officers didn't have the courage to look her in the eye. I want each and every one of those police officers to be able to look me in the face. They, they haven't done that yet. They're going to see me at every court date, <laughs> everyone, exactly. and um, until we get justice for my son. All of the officers are out on bond. They are due back in court on May 1st. Right now, people are gathering to honor the 21 lives lost during the stampede at the E2 nightclub. 20 years ago today. The now vacant club on the south side was overpacked. That stampede began after a fight and hundreds of partiers rushed to the only exit. Just months before, a judge ordered for the closure of the club's second floor for building violations. The club owners were charged in the incident, but never convicted. Michigan State University professor was teaching when a gunman entered his classroom and started shooting Monday night. He says he's haunted by the images of his students ducking for cover. Professor Marco Diaz Munoz says the shooter fired at least 15 shots and two of his students, Ariel Anderson and Alexandria Werner, were killed. When you see someone who's totally masked, you don't see their face, you don't see their hands, you don't see, it, it's, it was like seeing a robot. It was like seeing something no, not human. Diaz Munoz now calling for change, saying if lawmakers saw what he saw, they would at least be shamed into taking action. The major story our ABC 7 I team has been working on this week was that mass shooting at Michigan State University in East Lansing. Our investigative reporter Chuck Gowdy joins us with details and discussion in tonight's I team insider. Chuck. Rob, whether students on their knees or police on both feet running down details and fresh clues in this case, the search for answers at MSU this week has been painstaking and painful. But tonight, investigators have some new details as to the killer's possible motivation. That note with what authorities believe may have been targets of his violence and an explanation of why the shooter had it out for so many. Two pages of notes were found in his wallet, which was on his person as well. Those are the, uh, that was the note that indicated um, where he was going to visit and also kind of gave an indication of why he may be a motive, but nothing that we can actually confirm just yet. It appears based on the content of the note that he felt that he was slighted in some way by people or businesses. In addition to a note, police tonight revealing what they found in the backpack that mass shooter Anthony McCray was wearing in this picture and what officers approached him here a few hours later and a few miles away from the MSU campus. He had two 9mm pistols that were purchased legally after a 2019 gun charge had been reduced from a felony, according to police, but the guns were possessed illegally because neither had been properly registered with authorities. Also in McCray's backpack when he was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound were eight loaded magazines and 50 loose rounds of ammunition. The 43-year-old shooter was living in this home with his father, whom police say has admitted to knowing about his son's fire
firearms, but has claimed he asked that they be removed. Well, the father has some theoretical culpability in the Michigan State case. If the government, if the state can demonstrate that the father acted in a grossly negligent way, possessed information that should have led him to realize that his son was going to pull the trigger and kill people. As the investigation here continues, authorities today returning briefly to the dorm where the first attack occurred. It really is um, surreal and you know, sleep doesn't come easy really. Uh, there's a lot of thoughts going through your head, so with all the support it helps, but uh, everyone's just trying to get through it one day at a time. Inside the MSU case tonight, why local prosecutors would have reduced felony gun charges against McCray in 2019 that would have prevented him from legally purchasing the pistols used this week. In a statement sent to the I-Team, the former county prosecutor there saying she had no personal involvement in that gun case, and she said no policy, charge, judge's decision, new law, or increased budget can completely eliminate the risk of harm. Rob? Chuck, what could have prevented, if anything, this mass shooting at MSU? It's easy enough to say that nothing could have prevented it, but the fact is, if this individual had been charged with a felony uh, and it had not been cut down to a misdemeanor back in 2019, he wouldn't legally have been able to purchase these guns. And he did, in fact, purchase both of these 9mm pistols that he used at Michigan State, legally walked into a store, bought them according to the state and federal laws. He didn't register them with the state of Michigan as is required, so technically he possessed them illegally illegally. But again, if he had been charged with that felony and gone and the authorities had gone through with that back in 2019, he might not have gone through with the Michigan State Massacre. So he was able to legally purchase these weapons, but in that process, he didn't register them. So is this a failure of gun laws? Well, clearly it's a, it's a failure of gun laws because he didn't register them. So if you have a gun registration law and there's no teeth to it and people are allowed to just do what they want with guns and not register them, then what's the point of the gun registration laws? Uh, certainly the gun proponents in the state of Michigan would say that none of these things matter, that all of these regulations should just go away. Um, but there's a debate underway tonight as to whether or not uh, this particular case should be the focal point for that. With some reports he had mental health issues. Any mental health laws in place that might have uh, led to something that could have prevented this? Well, there are red flag laws that we've reported on across the country. In some cases, the, if they've been in place for a couple of years, they seem to be working in certain cases. In the state of Michigan, he apparently was firing uh, his, his weapons and target practice in his backyard. The police would come and they'd find some evidence of it on the ground, talk to the father who said he would ask the son to get rid of the guns. Uh, whether or not this individual should have had uh, his gun stripped by authorities just based on these few complaints is going to be a, a, you know, a point of debate in the state of Michigan as they try to figure out how to prevent the next MSU attack. Chuck, you're a proud Michigan State alum. How has this affected the thousands of MSU graduates here around Chicago? We have friends who have young men and women who are students there. They came home this week after such a disturbing thing happened. What, what are you hearing from fellow, fellow graduates like you and those who also have students who are there? Of course, nobody thinks that it's either going to happen to them, somebody they're close to, or a place where they spent four or more years in college in most cases. Uh, I can't imagine what it would be like to either be a student or be a parent of somebody who has a student in the middle of this situation. But really, what I've been telling my friends from Michigan State who have contacted me is that the most disturbing part of this is that it could have happened anywhere. It didn't have to be Michigan State. Could have been U of I, Northwestern, could have been ISU. It really doesn't matter. We've seen it happen across the country. This won't be the last one, unfortunately. The question going forward is, what can you do to reduce the odds that this kind of a thing will happen again to this extreme? Chuck Gowdy with tonight's I-Team Insider. We always appreciate your time, Chuck. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. So interesting. Thanks so much for that tonight. Now to the Chicago's mayor race and the, par the parade to the polls. Students at two Chicago high schools casting their ballots today. Students say it was hard to decide who to vote for because there are nine candidates in the race. It felt more like a, it was a multiple choice question, kind of, but um, at the same time, I felt like I knew who I was going to vote for. It was, it, it was a tough decision. 
Well, the students say violence is their number one concern. A new poll released today in the race for Chicago mayor shows that Paul Vallis is gaining momentum. It also shows that Mayor Lori Lightfoot's chances for a second term are in trouble, even if she makes a runoff. Political reporter Craig Waltz and I taking a closer look at all the numbers. With time until Election Day running out, a new poll suggests Paul Vallis is running up his lead. The independent poll done by Victory Research shows Vallis in front with 22.8 percent, followed by Lori Lightfoot at 17.1 percent and Brandon Johnson right behind at 16.1 percent. Jesus Chuy Garcia is in fourth at 13.8 percent, with Willie Wilson the only other candidate in double figures with 11.8 percent. It appears, unless something changes, that Paul Vallis will be in the runoff with someone. Um, I don't know who that is. The, the lots of candidates are close enough to be there. McCullough, who is not affiliated with any candidate, says Brandon Johnson could be the sleeper in the race, which may be why Mayor Lori Lightfoot is directing her latest digital attack ad at him over Johnson's comments about defunding police. I don't look at it as a slogan. It's, it's, actually, it's an actual real political goal. Johnson, with his own ad, attacking Lightfoot over crime. Lori Lightfoot hasn't made Chicago safer, but I will. McCullough's poll shows that Lightfoot would lose to each of the other top four candidates in a runoff, with Vallis beating her most handily by 19 points, and the closest race being with Willie Wilson. Lori Lightfoot seems to have uh, a problem if she makes the runoff, in that a majority of voters, 54 percent, more than 54 percent, say they wouldn't vote for her under any circumstances. Garcia, the one-time frontrunner, now trying to downplay the poll. The next 10 days will be critical. We're going to be up uh, competing for all of those voters in the next uh, a few days. Pollster Rod McCullough says he does not expect that the race and the polling numbers will change much between now and Election Day, which is shaping up, he says, to be a runoff between Paul Vallis and whoever can come in second place. Craig Wall, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Craig, thank you. Bald heads making Chicago proud tonight. A big fundraiser returns. Look forward to it. Plus, the boss will be back through Springsteen adding another Chicago show after the success of today's ticket sales is coming up. Okay, time for our Friday oh, forecast. Oh. You made it. It's cold out, 22 degrees. But remember at this point yesterday, it was looking pretty miserable out there. And it we saw was, some sunshine. I mean, the whole, it looked like a snow globe, actually, yesterday. It, yeah, we watched time, it from know, here at the it, studio, yeah. then having to drive home in it. Right, it was really, it was, yeah, yeah, it was not great. Yesterday. But that's gone, Cheryl. Right, and the sun was shining <laughs> today as we finish another work week together on this Friday. Yay! It's kind of nice when the sun is shining, so you don't really pay attention to the cold. It helps deal with that right. frigid cold, which it still <laughs> is clearly 22 <laughs> degrees, but the weekend warm up is coming too. That's all right. Yeah, and the snow and the ice that's lingering from yesterday's storm will continue to melt as we go through our Saturday and Sunday. But tonight it's all about the frigid air. Right now we sit at 22 winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour on the light side, but it makes it feel about 10 degrees colder outside a frigid Friday for us. Live Doppler 7 Max right now where we are quite 
quiet. That was a different situation yesterday, but that storm that moved through now really pushing off of the east northeast coast there, but Boston down towards New York still getting impacted with some light precipitation. We also have some lake effect happening across parts of the Great Lakes. Not a whole lot of ice cover on uh, our lakes there across the Great Lakes at this point in the season, which is pretty remarkable. So still allowing for that lake effect machine to pump. Now all of these icons here are snow reports from yesterday. We zoom on into northern Illinois, northwest Indiana. We did pick up a few inches of snow for some of you. Harvard five inches, Marengo 3.8, St. John Crown Point, anywhere from about two to four inches close to your area in northwest Indiana. In terms of that snow through this season, we really haven't seen a whole lot. November and December under five inches of snow. January getting close to 10 inches so far for the month of February. Only two inches of snow, not really looking at accumulating snow throughout the next seven days either. So for this season, we are below average, and I know you know that because we really haven't seen that much so. 16.2 inches, almost a foot below normal. So as we head into the next couple of days, we'll continue to monitor our snow threat, but temperatures looking to stay above average. Satellite and radar mostly clear, making for the cool night. Temps in the teens and 20s. Like I said, it feels even cooler. Wind sustained at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, but wind chill single digits and in the low to mid teens. Thankfully, just off to the west, a milder air mass. And temperatures tonight really not going to drop too much more. So as we head into the overnight hours and the day tomorrow, holding steady low to mid 20s by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. We climb up to about 30 degrees. We continue that transition with gradual warming temperatures right through our entire weekend. Saturday and Sunday highs here in the mid to upper 40s. We will have some high cloudiness on our Saturday, but still some filtered sunshine. Mainly dry conditions overnight Saturday into Sunday. A few sprinkles while we're sleeping, but by Sunday we're back to the dry conditions. Partly sunny. It will be a bit gusty. Winds out of the south and west 15 to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures there will make it feel even a little bit cooler, but still in the 40s, which is above average and way better than today. Our future cast in terms of our sky conditions mostly clear tonight. Like I said, temperatures not dropping tomorrow was we'll some high clouds moving in during the afternoon, so some filtered sunshine. Like I said, a few sprinkles possible overnight Saturday into Sunday few and far between. We're dry by that morning time of about 8 a.m. Sunday morning filtering in more sunshine for us. A few clouds up to the north, but dry conditions here expected and temperatures staying above average as we head into most of next week. That cold weather doesn't really move back in until Friday. 28 degrees there, so similar to this week where Fridays are cold day. For tonight, upper teens and low 20s for the day tomorrow. High temperatures back in the 30s and 40s, just a little bit cooler to the north. We're dry through our weekend looking very pleasant and that sunshine continuing not only through Saturday and Sunday, but also Monday. And then as we head into the middle of next week, it does get a little bit more active Wednesday, a wintry mix and also some rain in the forecast. And we'll continue to monitor the track of that system. Back to you. I won't think about that yet, right? Not yet. No. no. Right. Got to enjoy the weekend. Enjoy our weekend right. for sure. Yes. All that sun. Yes. And the warm weather. Something else for you to enjoy, Cheryl, the world of chocolate. It returns to Union Station. Yes, this evening. It is back after the pandemic pause. It's a fundraiser for the AIDS Foundation of Chicago, and it features chocolate from around the world, plus light bites and cocktails. Awards are set for tonight at 8 o'clock. I've never been to that, but I know lots of people at the station go every year. They had deep fried bacon over chocolate or chocolate over bacon. And that was a real popular one. People love that. Is that good? They said it was good. Well, they didn't bring it back. Bacon is good with anything. They didn't bring it back, right? right. Come on. <laughs> uh, bacon's good, good with anything, I think, right? I you mean, if you it. like chocolate, that is the way to go. It looked right? amazing. I know, right? Huh. On a Friday night. I'm hungry. Ooh. I know you yeah, had dinner. I had some. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy, for my oh, dinner yeah, we have tonight. Chicken noodle soup it was tonight. delicious. It was right. homemade. Yes. Not just any, and the spoon that accompanied it. It was like, it's can so I funny. keep the spoon? Sure. Okay, because yeah, it's, it's really spoon. fancy. It is a it's a fancy so spoon. Fancy. <laughs> I think she got it from uh, her mom for uh, Christmas. It was on Oh, sale. really? Yeah. Okay, but it makes it taste better, I think. And then that York peppermint patty for dessert. She's awesome. It's cool breeze of winter. There we the go. Chocolate. So you're See? well fed. I just want some <laughs> chocolate now. The boss adds another show at Wrigley Field. Did you hear about this? Tickets for their August 9th concert. 
nearly sold out in minutes. So Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band decided to add a show August 11th and tickets for that show go on sale Tuesday on the Cubs website. So remember the Cubs are in charge of this. Is that what you're born in the USA? Is that what you were singing? Yeah, come on. No, <laughs> it was more of a hum. It was more of a hum. I was accompanying your reading. Oh, nice. You know, now I can do the real, you know. You know what I was listening to last night on the way home, not to get too off to I know we got a lot. To, uh, it was 80s ballads on oh, my I like Spotify. That. Ooh. I was belting right. out some Prince because okay. I know you love Prince. And I listened to Sometimes the whole. Sometimes it rains or snows Purple Rain. April. Oh, Purple Rain. Oh, Purple and, Rain. And uh, I didn't realize that the full song mm -hmm. like really goes on for right. the last couple minutes right. with some instrumental. Yeah. I was belting Long. that out. You were out. listening to the live version. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay it was that's the live why. version. You were listening to the live version. A little Madonna in there, a little Whitney Houston. Whew. Ooh, that should have been. A nice I was ride channeling home. you singing. Yeah, wow, three Hopefully people that me. ooh that I admire in their a couple others talent. in their poison yeah. and you know foreign. And they were just ballads though, so yeah, it's like it was soothing, relaxing on yeah, your way home. It was good. What was the one that got two billion views or something? Oh, that was the Guns N' Roses. Stuff? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what was September Rain? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle. Yeah, uh, November September, rain. November. Yeah, November rain. So. <laughs> Sometimes it rains, sometimes right. in April. Yeah. That was the, rain. We had that the other day. Music video from them hit 2 billion okay. views. Oh, 2 wait. billion. See? Greg's on the ones and twos tonight. Is what that is kind that? of jazzy? He's, he knows you like jazz. Yeah, I well, do like that you too. Sometimes you listen to that. Well, the music collection's limited on the seven. Right. So he doesn't have much to put <laughs> on there. That's uh, why you have so. to sing it for me. Which Whitney oh, Houston song was it? Um, I Will Always Love You. Uh, well, no, it wasn't that one. Um, oh, Saving was, the best for last. Oh, no, no, it was another. It was her other big hit in the '80s. I can't remember now. Yeah, no, yeah, it was they slow, were slow. It was more Michelle of a ballad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How will I know? Also a good song. I'll think yeah. of it. I want to dance. With Saving somebody. all my love. Did you say that? Saving all my love for you. Yeah, that was it. Oh yeah. Saving all my love for you. Oh man, we're good. Go. We are no, good. I don't think we're good. Um. We don't. We can't start this. People want to watch. Please stay right. with us. We want to talk about. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you. So that's we're Greg late. telling us that was a no. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about something that is making Chicago yes, proud. Good. I love this story. Every year, the fight against childhood cancer, the Children's Hospital UIC, hosting its annual event in support of the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Ten people had their hair cut or shaved. And every year, th this is bravery. And bald is beautiful. And they are helping so many people. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it takes a lot of courage to do that. It, for you, and it helps, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people appreciate yeah. that, especially kids. Really. I mean, and they are beautiful. Bald is beautiful. You know how long we've been saying that term. So, uh, good um, job to all of them. Yeah. So, this is the final weekend of the Chicago Auto Show, and some people shopping for new cars mm -hmm. are learning it may cost them a lot more than expected. Uh, John Garcia was out there for us, and he'll share this yeah. story coming up. Very yeah, pricey. really expensive car really expensive that he was thinking about just looking at <laughs> just do that <laughs>
This weekend's your last chance to visit the Chicago Auto Show. So if you are looking for a new car, be prepared to pay a lot of money for it. John Garcia, he's reporting tonight from McCormick Place. Tanya and Liam Boylan are checking out the Ford F-150 Lightning. They like it, though it might not be in their preferred price range. No, I think it's gorgeous. You were guessing the price of that truck, what do you think? Yeah, about $65,000, $70,000. So if I told you $86,000? The MSRP sticker price, a cool $85,950. And the auto show is filled with equally eye-popping vehicles at equally eye-popping prices. Charlie Johnson is a Corvette guy. He's been driving them for some 40 years, but right now he's holding off on adding another one to his garage. You're going to wait for him to come back down then, right? Yep. Experts say prices have risen to all-time highs in the auto industry mostly because of supply and demand. During the pandemic, the supply chain issues made it very difficult for automakers to get parts. That's starting to ease, they say, and with that, they expect the prices to come down a bit. The prices will even out over time because there's going to become more supply. The auto show is a great place to whet the appetites of car buyers with the newest and flashiest models, many of them also among the most expensive. But the show can also be a pretty good time to buy as well. Things are looking better. Prices will start to come down and um, incentives might start to creep back in. John Garcia, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And earlier this evening, John was uh, at the wheelchair basketball court and we asked him to shoot a basket here. He said like the three point line. This was live during our 4 p.m. broadcast and he almost hit this. Ouch, and somebody. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> right. geez. This is such a, this is a new, really neat thing wow, uh, that people could try. Yeah, uh, that people could try uh, to get a sense of what it's like to play a wheel, wheelchair ball. Uh, but uh, he, he's an athletic dude, and he, um, that's oh, a far. He's, I mean, he's that's going a, to the right. I, I don't, don't know, know if I could get that in the air from, from three point land, but yeah, he, he did it for us. Right. We put he him on tried the spot. it. You know, at least he tried it. I agree. You know? I know, but because we call we so call him out. He wins just because he tried it. Yeah, I so agree. yeah, and I, yeah, I sent him an email. Looked pretty you. good too. I'm telling you, yeah, yeah he had a good throw down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's been having a great time. He was with a Corvette that was like 110,000. Oh, was that at five or six? At uh, was, five o'clock, yeah. and then I heard if you add all the extras on it, it comes to 150. Mm. So, and it was like seafoam green. No. Oh. Yeah. Dare to dream. That's I a lot know, for right? a Corvette. Right. <laughs> Any car, really. <laughs> it's probably a waiting list, though, if you're a Corvette lover. You yeah, know. people will buy them. Yeah. All right. Well, still ahead for us tonight, there is a celebration of black beauty. We will take you to a new store that features all black-owned brands. That story is coming for you next on the other side of a break. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, today we're highlighting a Black-owned beauty store. One that will cater to women of color and feature exclusively Black-owned brands. Tonight, Leah Hope with the story. For a healthy glow of melanated skin, local esthetician Victoria Prince from Englewood created a line of skincare products to address issues women of color sometimes face. Skincare for 
the melanated skin has always been a need. However, the products that are there aren't really tailored toward the skin. The Tory Prince Beauty Line is sold at her Bridgeport studio and online. But getting her products on the shelves of national stores, Prince says, has been a challenge. Very hard. A lot of them want to already see you hit a certain amount of numbers, you know, half a million, million, two million. It's like, I'm trying to get to that point. This spring, Prince's products will be among those sold at the Black Beauty Collective in Hyde Park. The collective will be all black owned lines, mostly from women entrepreneurs who design the products to care for and accentuate the natural beauty of melanated skin and diverse hair textures. From the consumer side and ensuring they have a space for them, and then also from the entrepreneur side of the house where they are getting the support and resources that they need to be able to scale their businesses to the next level. The collective's founder, Leslie Roberson, originally from Rockford, says she was frustrated trying to find products that were right for her and her daughter. When I'm running out to look for a product, I see it, I'm like, oh, I love this, and I'm finding myself going to three or four major retailers to look for it, but it's not there. I think it's invaluable to have a place where you're welcomed, you're seen, you're heard, people value you, and we have the things that you value. The collective's Chicago flagship store on Hyde Park Boulevard opens April 8th, with stores in Houston, D.C., and Atlanta expected to follow. In the Hyde Park neighborhood, Leah Hope, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Wow, that looked nice. The facial looked yeah, great. Right. We're all relaxed I now want after to do watching that. it. It feels good on your yeah. face. And it's a, a powerful story, too, to be seen and felt and understood what the needs of the products for you. Specifically so, for everything. Yeah, it's because great. the skin is different, you know? Yeah. So it's really nice to know that you've got something that. It's just Men's dedicated. And women's skin, exactly. different too, just like different mm -hmm. races, Hispanic folks like me and African Americans like you, like yeah. it definitely, it matters. Right. Yeah. But it's all nice that you can go somewhere to get it taken right. care of and have somebody. In the winter, uh, I turn like an olive green. Because. <laughs> well, I get just because I get pale and you can't tell because I'm wearing makeup, right? Thank, thank goodness Alex makes it. Oh, uh, oh makes see. Look good. See, yeah. there you go. See, Greg, you Greg, can be it's a like, spa. Ah, uh, so zen. Audio, an audio guy. Yeah, we're zen. But there is something about it. And I have it at a spa treatment in forever. Yeah. That feels I mean, good about getting, you. Getting like your hands massage, your face, I mean. Yeah. I and mean, then products that are specifically designed for you is nice. So now we got to start thinking. Now I need it to. opens in April. We need to make an appointment like now. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Leah, thank you for taking us there today. We appreciate that. Well, today, the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum releasing its first series celebrating historically black colleges and universities. 13 HBCUs are featured, including Jackson State University, Howard University, and Grambling University. Each figure bears the school's nickname and the logo. They are available online for $35. Look at the Grambling Tigers, and Rob yeah, knows very you're well. A huge Him and his wife and his children gave me a bobblehead um, <laughs> for Christmas of the <laughs> Queen. Oh, Sister Jean. Yeah, Sister Jean. Jean. Now yes. Oh, there's the group shot of them all. Yeah, oh, look at that. Okay, I'm clever. looking for one that my parents went to, to. That's where I need to get. Like get them. one from there. I'll take them all. You know, they're so cute. Yeah, I yeah. love bobbleheads. They're so cool. You have a lot in your really, office. Really, I do. I know, right? <laughs> so, okay, coming up, uh, Quantumania. It's where many fans of the Marvel Universe will be at theaters this weekend for the latest Ant-Man adventure. Today, Jose Sanders talks to Evangeline Lilly about playing the Wasp. That story's coming up. Let's say hi to Cheryl. It is a chilly Friday night. We have wind chills right now down into the single digits for some of you, but warmer weather on the way for the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. How mild it's going to get and our next storm system, we're tracking it coming up.
Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Now landing in theaters, the latest movie chapter in the Marvel Universe. We're over uh, Kang. We've moved past him, um, <laughs> Jonathan Majors. No, he's an afterthought now because Evangeline <laughs> Lilly tells Jose Sanders the Wasp is spreading her wings in a different way yeah. for this sequel. <laughs> what are you so afraid of? There's something I never told you. Tell me about Hope. Uh, who is she? How would you describe this character? I'm always trying to keep up with her. I feel like I'm hanging on to her tails all the time because she's always changing and morphing and evolving really quite rapidly over the course of three films. She began this trilogy as a really cold, detached, corporate... B <laughs> and she ultimately has grown into this family woman. I mean, she's repaired her relationship with her father and she's reunited with her mother and she's fallen in love with Scott and now she's a stepmom to sweet Cassie and it's changed her life and it's changed who she is. You go low, I go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? I like to latch my teeth into something that I can use as an anchor point for a character so if I ever feel lost I can just refer back to that one thing and I struggled to find that with hope throughout the first two films and then on the third film I read the script and the penny dropped and I was like oh I get it now. She's the bullet. That, that's what she is. She's a bullet. So you've been studying the quantum realm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you ask me about it? I tried, Mom. A lot. You never wanted to talk about it. Michelle and I, we had such an intimate relationship playing mother-daughter in this film. And that was a real comfort for me. It's very rare that I actually get to have a really meaningful on-screen relationship with a woman. I've spent most of my career acting opposite men. And off camera, we became really close and it became a really supportive relationship that I'll treasure forever. Follow my lead. What do you want to see next for Hope? Um, well, let's see. Maybe a standalone Wasp movie. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go. Come on, right? <laughs> Who wouldn't? Jose Sanders, ABC7 Eyewitness News. I'm going to miss these specials with him. We've done about a week of, of Ant-Man. But don't worry, he's got something else. I told Jose he needs to keep a journal of everybody he, he interviews makes. and do a screenshot of everybody he yeah, interviews. Like a, well, I was telling yeah. Judy that if we ever need superhero help, we can reach out to oh, Jose, sure. who knows them all. Right. If you yeah. had a superpower, what would it be? Oh, wow. I, uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Fly? Could I fly? Oh, you'd oh. like to fly? I'd like to fly. Wow, or could I be, no, I want to be immortal. Actually, I don't, I don't know. You want to live forever? <laughs> no, those people seem pretty that. sad. Like uh, Captain America, he seems pretty bummed out about the fact that he's but, just. But Mickey and Minnie are like 200. Wait, are they super? They're, they're like 200. 200. They're old. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> they're so, 100 years old, right. but they're and going they're to happy. live on. Yeah, right. they are they're happy. They're happy, they have great skin, you know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. they're always very friendly. Uh, um, uh, they, yeah, they seem nice, but I don't, I guess we could consider them superheroes. Okay. Would you be seeking a special power? Um, mine, mine is, my superpower is kindness. That's my superpower. Because you know what the next story is. No, I I've, I've, that is mine. But that is, that's a real like, power. That's not a superpower. That's who you are every day. It is a superpower, I agree. You're you don't know. If, I know, because you're you incredibly kind to all of that us. Aren't, aren't you do random you acts of kindness daily. Yeah. So that's like a, that's a consistent that's power a, you possess. But it's powerful to be kind. It's hard. See? <laughs> See, that's it's, why it's powerful. It's, so, it's um, hard sometimes. So yeah. let's talk about spreading it, okay, right? right? Spreading kindness. Yeah, so like great. this, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, yes. it's the message. So you could have a weapon of kindness. <laughs> you could shoot lasers of kindness. Yes, right, <laughs> to people. We could feed off your superpower. <laughs> also, Mario, Luigi, and Princess oh. Peach. They're coming oh, to yes, life. Yes, yes, this is exciting. Them. Okay, are, would they be considered superheroes? Oh, I like you. All right. He's my favorite. We're going to visit them. Ooh, we know her. <laughs> Super Nintendo World. Oh, no, man. No. Aww.
here is a great holiday we hope everyone can get behind. It is National Random Acts of is. Kindness Day. And you know what it means, right? It is all about small things that can improve someone else's life. So, for example, writing a hand note. Oh, I did that. I, I tell you that. Or okay. paying for a stranger's coffee, volunteering that. at a nonprofit, or simply giving someone a compliment. Yeah. You guys look amazing Thank today. You. Right. Thank um, you. And the idea is to remind people that kindness matters and hopefully encourage them to be kind every day. I feel like I do those things most mm -hmm. most days. I don't know about you. Do I you? mean, I feel we have like living kindness fairy here at oh. ABC. Well, that's so, right. <laughs> So. We're learning how to be better each and every day through you. Yeah. But it's the law of attraction. You attract what you are. So I, sure. I get it from you guys. So I think it's contagious, though. When it you're is. Around I, absolutely. Who are positive, especially yeah. at work, because if yeah. you, it, it brings you down sometimes being here with the news we mm -hmm. cover. But if people are in a decent mood, yeah, it's kind of yeah. today. I'm like, I'm so tired. <laughs> bringing everyone else We're down. Bring you up. No, no. See, you guys are bringing me up. You sat yeah. next to us. We're going to do that. Gonna, uh, well, yeah. I did for one whole year, 365 days. I did an act, random act of kindness, and I wow. documented it in everything. I have the whole thing, and even people responding to it, pictures of it. You journaled I mean, this? I journaled the entire year. Where 365 do you hail from? days. Right. She's um, the kindness planet. You know, and, and it was, I Another look at it world. when I need to feel I'm good. Cry. It, yeah. it is really it's kind of so something sweet. special. Yeah. So, Am I in the journal, or this was before we. we um, uh, it's, I probably years did ago. it, yeah, maybe eight years ago. Yeah, no, I was before, um, before our time. Yeah, so yeah. about. Hopefully, because yeah. I probably, like. <laughs> I, you wasn't probably, aware. You probably are in it, Cheryl. Like, yeah. and it ranged from things just like paying somebody's groceries in front of you who was struggling to oh, pay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, and you're in line, and you're like, just pay, put it on mine. Or if you came to me and said, Cheryl, you know, anything. We had a conversation, and I hugged you. It, and it's something like that. An extra hug. It could be real big, paying college and a lot tuition. Of people probably don't even yeah. notice some of the kind things yep. that they're doing, just right. Like their right. way of holding a door open for right. someone. Like little I things add up. Yeah. yeah. For one of our coworkers. Telling today. somebody like our floor director, Nick is amazing. You're amazing because he went on vacation and he took my prayer and put it into the wall. Oh no, the, that's true. The yeah, wall. you can't look like he's and, like, no, I'm yeah, not. Yes, he, he did. He was he took overseas. my prayer all the way to the, you know Israel and he put it into the wailing wall for me. That's huge. So it that was huge. So Nick. That is a, a random Impressive. act of kindness. Yeah, for the year. You know? You're like for the, the, for the, the ever. <laughs> right, forever. You have to do another kind thing for Cheryl because that was right. it. Yeah, right. And he's not. He said he's not. No. no. <laughs> right. He's like, I'm right. uh, okay, well, yeah. I feel like I'm going to so try and do more kind things. And your wife, Wendy, weekend. today with a homemade she chicken noodle All soup. All I did was brought it with to you. With love. Yeah, I but feel But you like brought it. it. You carried it in your yeah. car. I feel Brad, I didn't bring you any soup. Or Yeah, I don't, I think that. Or Greg. That might exit out. No, just kidding. I do have a plan to one day bring all of her delicious yes. soup and chili. I am just kidding. Sell we'll this one. On the chicken yeah. noodles should be sold it at could grocery be. stores. It's I good. mean, yum to the yum to the yeah. eat. So four more hours left in the so. day, too? <laughs> No, we're getting less than that now for us, oh, like three or yeah. so. Yeah, well, until the end of the day. Right, we're going to yeah, get there. It's so, uh, well, it's you so both good. look fabulous. Can yeah. I give that a compliment? Ooh, see, that, that, that's that great. And Michelle, you're a, an incredible producer. And Greg, you are a fantastic director okay. and DJ. Yeah. Yeah. D oh, he's a good DJ. He's a good DJ. Great, yeah, see, right. DG, she said move on, so yeah. done. Oh, she did. Yep, okay. go ahead. I didn't hear that. <laughs> um, you can now step inside the world of video games. Super Nintendo World now open at Universal Studios Hollywood. Theme Woo park features, Super Mario Brothers, theme rides, attractions, restaurants, of course, gift shops. A similar world will open in Look Orlando in 2025. This will be a big one for kids and adults. Like, I grew up with Super Mario. So I remember cool. in high school when we got the first one on Nintendo oh. 64. All day, every day. Yeah. Nintendo. Mario Kart. Was yeah. so hard. Oh, that's Thanks. fun. You can play with your kids, too, because just, I just smash buttons. Wasn't yeah. that the hardest really... gift to get for Christmas one year? Like, Probably. everybody would stand in line at Best Buy for hours overnight mm -hmm. getting oh, the. I, well, yeah. We had Atari, which was Pong, oh, was the first one. <laughs> it was Paddle. Yeah, that was the first feet, video game. Feet, You're Pac Man. Right. Back and feet, forth, back right, and feet, forth, back and forth. Feet. And then Paper Boy. <laughs> Paper Boy. Oh, Paper Boy was great. That was when it started going up. Uh, but it, it wasn't Atari. Pitfall was the Atari. We're one aging ourselves. Yeah, right, totally. Woo. I love that. Aging Grace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a compliment. A random act of kindness, so, you know. Who, oh, there we go. Who, what is that? Sound from Atari, right? You know, the other option to aging is not aging, so we'll take aging, right? I'm aging. Yes. Yeah, we'll There's no doubt it. I'm aging. Yeah, we'll <laughs>
Well, if you wake up today, you're older than you were yesterday. So that's true. a great thing, right? <laughs> yes, I don't yes, know. Yes, that's, that's, that's a blessing. Well, let's talk about this. Everybody remembers this too. Um, yeah, I love this. The, my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. It will arrive in theater September Three. 8th. Focus features announced the date today. Nia Vardalis wrote and directed the new film along with many of the original cast members. The original film, if you remember, it came out in 2002. The sequel was released in 2016. And if I had been paying attention, I would have showed you my picture with her. She came here into the ABC7 studios on State Street promoting the first one. Crazy. In, in 2002. Yeah. yeah so it's been was, seven it was, years or so since the yeah. sequel. It's been a while. And I remember this wasn't going to get made, and now it is obviously. It's really good. She taught me how to say thank you in Greek. Hmm. That is stuff. Oh, you remember? Yeah, forever and ever. So cool. Yeah. I well, he's had, Greek. Did she say it? She didn't say that, right? Did she? I said it really good. Oh, it's kindness day. It's, right. <laughs> it's kindness day, Nick. He's nodding his head yes now. So, okay, so how would you say Evgeny stuff? I mean, thank you. See, it's wow. That's that sounds so right. much more authentic. It's, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not an act of kindness, Cheryl. <laughs> but you were uh, so close. close. You were so close. close. We'll take it. <laughs> say it again, Nick. Wait, Wait, hold on. Say it again, Nick. I a funny stop. A See, I've got a stop. See, a funny stop. Right. I think I got the G and the F. Leave it to you. That's cool. I was close. Uh, we're done in eight minutes or so here. Uh, we want to take a last look at weather with yeah. Cheryl. It's still cold out Act there. Act of kindness. Yes. This forecast. Yes, she has. Is Thank it? you. Take credit. Yes. I should take credit right Weekend now. Weekend. We were kindness. talking about superpowers. If I could have one, it would be to control the weather, and then it would just be 72 and sunny all the See? time in Chicago. Isn't that San Diego? Yeah, like, right. Or something. Or but no one would know. They would just wake up, and it would be like, it's supposed to sound. No, nope, it's going to be beautiful. Well, we need to get you in the Marvel Universe and work <laughs> on <Yes>. that, Cheryl. <laughs> right now, it's 22, degree, 22 degrees, feeling more like 12. Wind chills are a factor out there today. So we're going to see these temperatures drop as we head into the overnight hours. It's going to be quite cool for the start of the weekend, but then we're going to see those temperatures gradually increase as we head into our Saturday and Sunday satellite and radar combined that system that moved through yesterday now off the coast of New England. The storm reports coming in from yesterday, so let's not forget that we're just dealing with some ice and snow and the remnants of that system lingering across parts of the area. So still some icy spots on those untreated areas like pavement sidewalks, so just be alert. But the snow totals Harvard and Marengo close to four to five inches for this season. Not a whole lot of snow. January, the top spot of 9.9 .9 inches of snow this season, 16.2, but that's about a foot below normal for this time of the year. Satellite and radar are combined where we are clear and dry. Temperatures are quite cool and they will continue to drop. We have wind sustained at about five to 10 miles per hour. So as we take a look at the wind chills, what it really feels like outside in the single digits and low teens. But thankfully tonight, milder air just off to the west of us is going to be moving in winds out of the south and west. So temperatures tonight really not dropping by tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. We're up to about 30 degrees and temperatures will continue to climb from that point into the afternoon. We climb into the mid 40s by Sunday, getting those high temperatures close to about 50 degrees under partly sunny skies. Gusty winds will feel closer to 40, but a whole lot better than today. Future cash showing our temperatures holding steady through the overnight hours. Dry conditions tomorrow afternoon, some high cloudiness, but temperatures going up into the 40s and then a few sprinkles possible overnight Saturday into Sunday just passing them by while we're sleeping basically. And then by Sunday, we will clear it out yet again. Dry conditions expected as we head through our Sunday and Monday and things looking pretty quiet and calm until we get into the middle of next week with temperatures staying above average there right through Thursday. Next week, our cold day yet again will be our Friday. But as we take a look at the big picture here, a few sprinkles late Saturday into Sunday. We're pretty quiet Monday and Tuesday by Wednesday late in the day. We could find some snow across our northern counties and this next storm system will be making a beeline right into northern Illinois, northwest Indiana. So we'll be watching for the potential of not only rain, but also some ice and snow. For tonight, teens and 20s, it's going to be a cold one, but tomorrow temperatures going up into the upper 30s and 40s, a little bit milder off to the south. Our seven day calling for those temperatures above average in the 40s. Monday looking good. Tuesday, few areas of drizzle possible, mainly later in the day, but our wet day looks to be Wednesday with rain, even some snow well up to the north. We'll continue to fine tune that and then turning colder by Friday, but beautiful.
weekend. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of great weather to do acts of kindness in. Yeah, well, we like that act of kindness that you're giving us yes. perfectly timed. That's <laughs> an act of kindness. Melt some of the snow and stuff. Yeah. Agree, yeah. yeah. A zip lining at 85. A woman crosses Ooh. off a bucket list item wow. at the world's fastest zip line. Look oh at her go. My. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Look at her. Okay. Nice. So exciting. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. Dreams do come true, especially for an 85-year-old woman in England who ziplined across the sky going 100 miles per hour. Wow. Her nursing home has an initiative to help people try new hobbies. Sally Webster wanted to try ziplining. Yeah, and they took her to the fastest zipline in the world in North Wales. Who knew there was the fastest? That's, That's a long way. I can't down. imagine yeah. the body going 100 I mean, miles right. per hour. Right. Like, have you been in a car that goes yeah, that, that fast? And then, Lake. ooh, that's a lot. I um, think she did it twice. But how too. fun is that? Was that the same woman? I think she. Yeah. That's that's a bit. Ooh. You guys ever done it? Yes, but not that. Like, but it was have a you zip smaller, line? Yeah. Yeah. yeah just smaller. like 10 feet. Okay. <laughs> I've done some crazy ones. Costa Rica, Hawaii, like. Wow. Really high and intense. Thought I was going to not make it, but I but did. did. Yeah. But was it fun? Jumped out of planes. I've done a lot. Jumped out of a plane. Ooh. Oh. I wanted to go bungee jumping in Africa. My sister wouldn't let me go. Bungee jumping. Uh, bungee yeah. jumping you hurts. Just jump off the oh, it does? bridge yeah. or something. Oh, really? You like snap your neck. Oh, okay. Wow. In case anyone's good. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all. She's done that too. <laughs> Still right. here. And lots yeah. of random acts of kindness too. Have a great weekend, y'all. We'll see you at 10 on ABC7.